The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is DJ, and today we're going to be building something that I like to call a reverse music box. So with most technology today, we either type or swipe or maybe even talk to things to get them to do what we want. And I've always been a huge fan of the Legend of Zelda franchise, and one of the things you often do is use music to control the world around you. Now, we can't control the weather or time, but we actually can detect melodies and use that to do something interesting. So instead of a music box that, when you open it, you get music, I'm going to be making a box that when you give it music, it opens. Let me show you how I built my own. Amazing Hacks Inspired Designs Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So how are we actually going to do this? Well, the main thing we need to sense is audio, and the easiest way to do that is with a microphone. So I'm going to be using this tiny Electret microphone that's got a breakout board. So this is already uh, biased to a DC offset, and that means we can connect it directly to the analog to digital converter of a microcontroller. So for the heart of the operation, we're going to be using this. This is the Arduino MKR0, and right now it's my favorite uh, little breakout board for the Atmel SAMD21, which is a nice mid-range 32-bit microcontroller. So this will be detecting the audio via its ADC from the microphone, and as a form of feedback, we'll be controlling some RGB LEDs that light up as we play the correct tunes, as well as playing audio back when we complete our version of the melody. So it will play the full version of the song much better than I can. So for the LEDs, we're gonna be using this. This is a high density strip of addressable RGB LEDs. This will provide feedback so that when we play the notes, they'll light up. So if we want to play back audio, of course the digital to analog converter on the microcontroller can't directly drive speakers, we'll need an amplifier. So I chose this stereo amplifier breakout, and this in turn will drive two 3 ohm, 3 ohm, 3 watt, 8 ohm speakers. And even though we've only got one audio channel, that's fine, I just want two speakers for extra volume. And since we want motion, once we finally detect the correct melody, I'm just going to be using a cheap, off-the-shelf, uh, standard hobby servo. So since I want everything to run standalone, I'm going to be using this single-cell lithium polymer battery that has a nominal capacity of 1200 milliamp hours. And while the Arduino board that I chose does have built-in single-cell charging, I'm actually going to be using this separate breakout board, which also has a built-in 5-volt DC-DC step-up converter. And 5 volts will be necessary because we need at least 4.8 for the servo, as well as 5 volts for the addressable LEDs. All right, so let's talk about what we actually get and how do we convert our input to our desired output. Well, the microphone is going to give us an analog signal that is centered on VCC, which in this case is 3.3 volts, divided by 2, so uh, 1.67. Now we're going to get that analog signal, and in reality, we don't actually have infinite samples. The ADC has a finite resolution, so really it's a bit more jaggy. Now it's not this jaggy, but I need to exaggerate so it's visible. And we can only take so many samples per second. So we're really just getting points that can exist at some point on those little plateaus. So this is going to be an approximation of our audio waveform. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but we don't want the audio waveform. We want to know what frequency or frequencies are present in the audio waveform so we can say, hey, is that the correct note? So in order to do this, we need to use a Fourier transform. 
Now, people are, there are many people who are much more qualified than I to explain how that works, and I highly recommend checking it out um, because it's a really interesting thing if you love more advanced math and signal processing. But suffice it to say that if we use our uh, Fourier transform, I'm going to be using a fast Fourier transform just because there's already a library for it, uh, we will get an output. So we'll be able to get the component frequencies of our signal. So we can say, hey, oh, this uh, 800 hertz signal uh, is above, you know, whatever amplitude we want. Therefore, the note that we're expecting has been played. All right, so now you can see I've got the microphone board connected to the analog input of the MKR0, and I've got the demo sketch for the FFT running. So in order to calibrate that, I've also got this. So this is a function generator app, which will allow me to play uh, nearly perfect frequencies. So I can test to see whether or not the algorithm is accurate or whether or not I need to calibrate the gain on my microphone. So let's test it out. All right, it's time for everyone's favorite type of video segment, where you watch some random guy on the internet scroll through static code and tell you what it does. Wow, let's jump in. All right, so this is the, the entire program for the reverse music, bots, music box. It's not a robot. All right, it's actually pretty small uh, considering what it's doing, and I will roughly explain uh, the important parts and my thought process for how everything works. Now, of course, we'll just need to include our various libraries for playing back sound, controlling the servo, uh, running the FFT algorithm, and uh, controlling the LEDs. So here are the fundamental frequencies of the notes that I'll be detecting. Now, there are only five unique notes, but that's not uh, the melody itself. Um, some couple things for pin definitions and uh, our class objects for the various things we'll need, LEDs, FFT, audio, yada, yada, yada. All right, here are some uh, more values that are necessary for the FFT, and this is uh, given in the demo application, and there's quite a few things that could be adjusted uh, here depending on your application. Uh, I highly recommend checking out the Arduino FFT library on GitHub. Uh, if you're interested in figuring out more about that. And here is the actual melody that we'll be detecting. So it's just an array uh, of 12 notes. And these are actually a very basic representation of the beginning to Claire de Lune, which will be our song. So current note will be the index of the array um, that we're comparing to, to see if we're on the right note. And just some, uh, a little tolerance for the uh, output of the FFT because it's not precise, you know, it's, it's within 10 cycles uh, of the actual frequency. And the timeout between notes so that uh, you can't just take your sweet time while you're entering uh, the audio. All right, so let's jump into the setup some basic stuff just to initialize everything, nothing too fancy. Uh, just have the LEDs cycle up and then down on startup, uh, just as a quick test for power and to see that they're working. Uh, quick test of the SD card, not SSD, uh, and the uh, wave file to see that that's working and not corrupted. All right, let's jump into the meat of this. So here is the main loop, and the very first thing that it's going to be doing is running uh, the FFT. So it is blocking, uh, that's fine, because nothing else really needs to be happening during this. So it's just gonna be gathering samples from our one analog uh, input, 
And ultimately, after all of this, uh, we get to this function, which will return a floating point value um, that is relevant to the frequency, but I just cast it to an integer uh, because the notes that I defined up top are integers. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be comparing. And it's important to not compare integers to floating point values. So we get our frequency, and now we can say, is that the right note? And that's where we check right here. So we just say, okay, is the frequency above the current note of the melody uh, at the, that minimum range? And is it below that current note at the melody uh, below the maximum range? And if so, then we will just light up the appropriate LED and reset the timeout. And if we've reached the end of our melody, then we will unlock the box. So we'll just move the servo and then start playing our audio file. And then, all right, actually, I forgot about this. So this is the actual timeout code. So this will check to see uh, after we've played a note. So the very first note you have in, there's no timeout. Of course, that would be unfair if as soon as you turn on, you had three seconds to figure out what note to play first. So only the, uh, first since the very first one would be the zeroth note so the first through 11th notes have a timeout and if you do fail uh, the leds will turn red and then reset to zero and the current note will also go back to zero because you failed and so we'll play, we're playing the song now and we don't want the fft running so we just enter this little while loop so while it's not locked so while it's unlocked uh, we'll just check to see, and once the audio file is done playing, uh, then we'll just unlock the box and turn off the LEDs and go back to the beginning. All right, let's see this in real life. Here's the completed circuit, but as you can see, it's a little loose, so let's put it in its final enclosure. And ultimately, we get this. This is my temporary enclosure for the reverse music box. Ultimately, I would like to make this out of wood and completely hide the electronics so it seems a bit more magical, uh, but that is a design project for another day. What matters is that everything here is securely mounted and this is testable, so let's test it out. All right, so first, uh, let me go halfway and see that it effectively fails. So I enter in the next note, and it should fail. And now, let's do it right. Oh, let's not start with that. Well, that about does it for myself and my reverse music box here. I am almost content with how this turned out, but as a proof of concept, it proves my concept. And I definitely want to explore more acoustically activated electronics in the future. I still think that's a really cool idea. And speaking of which, if you've got a cool idea that you want to see us bring to life, let us know at element14.com forward slash suggestion box. I'll see you guys next time.